Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is your photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Rode and the 2018 My Rode Real Competition, which is back for its fifth year. So how do you get entered? You must create a three minute short film along with a behind the scenes video and be sure to use a Rode product. Now there's 25 categories to choose from and there's a million dollars in prizes up for grabs this year. Now to learn more, go to bit.ly slash fro real 18. First up, did you ever think you would see the day where a memory card would hit one terabyte? Well, that's exactly what ProGrade Digital just showed off at NAB. Yes, SanDisk did announce a one terabyte SDXC card back in 2006 but it never actually hit the market. At NAB this week, they announced the world's first one terabyte CF Express card. Now, if you haven't heard of CF Express just yet, it's the same form factor of the XQD card, but it's three times faster. How fast is it? ProGrade says it will hit speeds of 88 miles per hour and require 1.21 gigawatts of power in order to... Well, wait, that's actually my DeLorean. The card will hit speeds up to 1400 megabytes per second, which if you're wondering, is 1.4 gigs of data a second. You're gonna see some serious- Some of you who own cameras with XQD card slots like the Nikon D500, D850, and D5 can breathe a sigh of relief as you might be able to use these cards in your cameras if Nikon decides to offer a firmware update. Now this will be possible since CF Express is backward compatible with XQD. There's no word on price just yet, but if I had to gander a guess, I would say $698.43. What do you think it's gonna cost? Next up, when you hear the word pocket camera, do you instantly think of a camera so big that it won't actually fit in your pocket? Unless your pocket is this 1994 Flyer starter jacket? Yeah, Steven, I actually wore that every day in the winter and sometimes in the spring when I was a kid. That's not why I got beat up in school. I never actually got beat up in school. It's true though. Black Magic Design has announced the Fanny Pack, I mean, pocket cinema camera 4K, though Fanny Pack 4K would probably be a good option. This is the successor to their first pocket camera, which actually came closer to fitting in your pocket if you actually owned a pair of Jenko jeans. This camera is built around a micro four thirds sensor with dual native ISO and native DCI 4K resolution, and also records up to 60 frames a second in 4K and HD 120 frames a second. What's big about this camera? camera other than everything is the fact that it shoots in either 10-bit ProRes or 12-bit RAW internally. There's a few options for storage including standard SD, which makes no sense, UHS-2 SD, and CFast 2.0 cards. Sorry, ProGrade, no CF Express just yet. Now, this may be the first camera to allow you to utilize the USB-C port for direct external recording to something like the Samsung T5 SSD. Hey, Samsung, send me one of those in two terabytes, please. Some of the other features include a full-size HDMI port for clean 10-bit video, a mini XLR input with 48-volt phantom power for audio, 3.5-millimeter audio input along with a headphone jack. Now, on the back of the camera, there's a huge, not actually pocketable, five inch touchscreen for doing all those touchscreen things that you do when you have a touchscreen. Black Magic is also including a license to ill. Excuse me, I mean a license for their full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio, which normally sells for $300 by itself. And oh yeah, there's also a really small button if you'd like to take stills, though you probably shouldn't be doing that with this camera. The biggest news about this camera, other than its tiny pocket size, is its price. It's only $1,295. Now this might give the GH5S a run for its money. If you're one of those people who has a phone with just one camera and you've always wanted to get those amazing digitally blurred backgrounds, but you felt left out, well, don't worry, Instagram's got your back. They just released a new mode called Focus, which is basically a portrait mode knockoff. I tested this out with my front facing camera and it seemed to work fine. Look at that super soft blurred out hair. Some photographers may hate the fact that normal people will be able to fake that blurry background effect, but I have a different take. I think it introduces non-photographers to the world of photography and what might be possible if they take the leap towards a new camera, if they decide not to use their phone, that is. And finally, Nikon's huge announcement at NAB was not a pocket camera, but a robot called the Mark Roberts Motion Control, or 
MRMC for short, which is a company they acquired. Nikon showed off the Bolt and Bolt Jr., which seem like they do something. Now I say that because Nikon's big showing was watching these robots have a dance battle, but not actually showing what they can do. <laughs> In all reality, this technology is really interesting and can be used for various complicated moves that no human can normally achieve, including some incredible slow motion movement that many people think is CGI. But the really big question is, will it work with a Nikon mirrorless camera? Well, and there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last photo news fix where Steven did it, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's it. Jared Poland Frono's photo.com. See ya. <laughs>